you for joining us with Cardiovascular Research on Life interview with Professor Marion. My name's Ailey McGinnigal and I'm a cardiology registrar here in the west of Scotland. Professor Marion is over visiting us from Texas and we look forward to hearing some of his insights. So Professor Marion, as a, as a clinician who, who works in science and in translational research, how important do you feel it is for clinicians uh, to work in preclinical sciences? My uh, personal view is that every physician should train as a scientist during his or her medical school years and afterwards. And the subgroup of those physicians that pursue science will be the group that will make the next phase of discoveries that will impact the clinical care of patient. So I strongly believe that uh, physician scientists are the essential components of today's biomedical society and the group that will certainly advance the science and, and practice of medicine to the next level. So very crucial. And in rec recent work that's been done in genetic cardiomyopathies, what, what do you feel is the, is the, the key, big, the big players that, that mm. are emerging at the moment? So uh, genetics to me is the fundamentals and are basically the essence of all human diseases. And understanding the fundamental basis of human disease is the crucial step in trying to find the mechanisms that are involved in this pathogenesis and subsequently intervene, target those mechanistic pathways to prevent, attenuate, or cure the disease. In cardiomyopathies, the first discovery of a genetic mutation in 1990s by Cricket and John Seidman from Harvard University paved the way to delineation of the mechanism by which myosin and actin interact. And through that, we learned that interaction of myosin and actin is a fundamental mechanism in the pathogenesis of cardiomyopathy. Uh, subsequently, the investigators have moved on and developed drugs that can target this specific mechanism and it is hoped that this, by targeting so, we should be able to perhaps partially at least treat hypertrophic cardiomyopathy for which currently there is no effective pharmacological therapy. Mm. Um, so what, in the coming decade, what do you think the, the key think things are going to be? In, uh, again, only fools predict the future, and you <laughs> certainly will make me, you will make me to make a fool out of myself, which will be delighted to do so. I think the next decade we will have everybody genome sequenced at birth, and we will have our concept of genetic will change from the conventional deterministic genetics to probabilistic genetics, which means that we will know the risk of diseases based on probabilities, and according to that, we will intervene to prevent diseases. That will be my prediction. An example that today we can see is in lipid disorders. We can appreciate we have identified a dozen different genes that are targeting, that are influencing lipids such as triglycerides or lipoprotein little a. And now we are moving, developing drugs, whether it's RNAi or pharmacological small molecule inhibitors or monoclonal antibodies such as PCSK9 to target these molecules and, and, and impact you know, plasma level of these uh, potentially harmful lipid particles. And that will be, that is the immediate foreseeable outcome of genetic discoveries that will happen within the next few years. Professor Marion, undoubtedly the last 30 years has been groundbreaking in genetic research and we've come on um, leaps and bounds in, in cardiovascular genetics. It's been fascinating talking to you today. My pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.